in the next few videos I'm going to go over the algorithms and the hardware that is used to implement common arithmetic operations like addition, multiplication and division. Let's start with addition and of course you know this is a very simple algorithm this is the common grade school algorithm that we use to perform addition. So in this example down here I have a multi-bit binary number there are two different numbers I'm trying to add so I place them one below the other I look at the least significant bits over here add the one zero that gives me a one there is no additional carry so the zero basically gets carried over for the next set of bits I add the one and the one that gives me a one zero right so one plus one gives me two which is one zero in binary so I keep a zero here the one is the carry that gets propagated to the next bit the next bit now has to add the one which is the carry plus one plus one that gives me the sum three which is one one so I retain a one here move the one carry over here and so on so this is a very very basic algorithm if I'm doing a subtraction let's say I'm doing a minus b and I'm given the value of b then this is nothing but an addition of a with minus b so I essentially need to take the representation for minus b which is nothing but flipping the bits of b and adding one to it. So before I move on to multiplication let's just talk briefly about overflow conditions. So when I'm adding two numbers or when I'm adding two negative numbers let's say overflow situations can happen. Okay so if I'm adding two positive numbers right so let's say I'm taking two unsigned integers so they're both positive numbers and if I'm adding them an overflow happens when the 33rd bit becomes a 1 right so I'm adding two 32 bit numbers if, if there's a carry generated from the addition of the most significant bits then I end up having an overflow for a signed number again overflow can happen and this usually happens when you add two large positive numbers and you get a negative result right that just basically means that you had an overflow into that into that 32nd bit Similarly, if you add two negative numbers and you get a positive result, then that also means that you just had an overflow, right? So all of these overflow conditions are fairly easy to detect in hardware. There are well-defined conditions under which it happens. And when an overflow happens, the hardware can choose to either raise an exception or not, because there are some programming languages or some situations where the programmer does not want to get an exception when there is an overflow condition. So MIPS does provide for both of those cases. There are some instructions that do raise an exception when one of these overflow conditions is detected and they also have specific instructions such as add u and sub u where the overflow is simply ignored. Okay, Because for example if I'm doing arithmetic with addresses then in, in certain situations the overflow condition is intentionally being ignored. So to accommodate those cases the programmer or the compiler would use add u and sub u instructions and just basically ignore whenever that overflow does happen. It's also worth pointing out that the sum of a positive and a neg negative number will never cause an overflow.